Hi, welcome. Morning, guys. Good morning. And it is morning, huh? It is morning. It feels very morning-ish. Um, but welcome. We are going to talk today about a gift idea that we love. And um, also with a product that we sell a lot of. So, um, we work with a lot of Minky. You might have also Shannon heard, Cuddle. heard it called Cuddle. Cuddle and Minky, fun fact, are the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, except that Shannon Cuddle is Shannon Fabrics name for their Minky. Uh, when it comes to Minky, there are different quality levels. This and is our favorite. Shannon is the only kind of Minky we sell because we firmly believe it is by far the best. Absolutely. So um, there are other brands, but they stretch more and we don't like them as much because we've, we've, I've well, quilted a lot of people right. Minky and you know, anyway, so, but Minky comes in a lot of different prints and a lot of different patterns. And it's not just about the color. You guys, we quilt on flat Minky, uh, probably every day. So almost. your solid Minky that's flat and boring on the bolt. This is what we love to quilt on because it's gorgeous it creates this embossed like texture of, of whatever guys the this is my leafy quilt it's an elizabeth hartman quilt right. and so the quilting design that's on the front it doesn't show up as much on the front but on the back it's they, super it's awesome. awesome i don't know if you can see it really well with the lights on in this here. one over here but too it's, really it's little berries if i flip it over it's got these pretty vines that really show up and so, so we do a lot of flat minky on quilt backs. We do some luxe minkies on quilt backs. And when we mean, when we say luxe, uh, that's a word Shannon uses. And it's their higher pile, you guys. Um, it has different weights and different patterns. Some are made to look like fur, some are textured. This one has roses, roses in it. I'll show it to you in a minute. And so we have all sorts of different luxe cuddles. But today we're gonna talk about what to do with your small bits of luxe cuddle minky. And mm -hmm. that is a fantastic gift idea where we make ourselves an infinity scarf. And it's soft and cozy and beautiful. Very cozy. And, um, and they come together fantastic. in just a couple you know, minutes. They even kind of matches what I'm it wearing. It almost matches. And, it, and, it, and yes, they're, they're a quick gift idea. Jen went ahead and made some last night. Uh, I posted a picture with her little tag on it. And they make a fantastic Christmas gift, you guys. And they're... Cheap and really easy. easy because one yard of 60 inch wide minky here, which is what I have right here, will make three. That's three right. scarves, which is awesome. So you can make three scarves out of one yard. Um, now, for example, she was saying with leftovers. So I made this little <laughs> crib sized quilt, um, and with my scrap minky, because she used this. a 60 inch wide piece of minky, and this quilt isn't 60 inches long, clearly. Right. So she had a big remnant left at the end. So with my remnant, I made myself a scarf. See, and look at that gorgeous back. Right. Ooh. She quilted so. it with like rosettes on the front, and then it's a rose embossed minky on the back. So it plays well. And this, in case you're wondering, the front of this fabric, the, this project, it's Woodland Songbirds by Poppy Cotton. And the pattern is called clover. And the pattern is called clover, and you can make it in all sorts of different sizes, and it's fantastic. Yep. Anyway, let's show you how to make one. I'm going to move this then. Yes, so let's cut. get stuff off, because we're going to cut. Now, what you're going to do, like I said, is you need one yard of fabric to make three scarves. Um, the reason for that is the pieces we're going to use to make each scarf is about 18 and a half, 19 inches by 36 inches. So... Where the minky is 60 inches wide, um, it would be silly to try and get one. I mean, you could get half a yard and make like one scarf. Or you can get one yard or and make, make three get one yard and make three. So, so this is a yard of minky. Um, you'll notice it's next to impossible for it uh, to get cut square. I'm sorry. Well, it's slippy. Um, so we got a yard. Right. Do we want to cut off the selvage. No, you can leave the selvage actually because minky selvage is different than fabric selvage. It is um, another fun little fact as I stand here doing this, uh, if you have a walking foot, you want it. If you, you don't have a walking it. foot, that's fine. Just pin lots, lots, lots more. If you have a walking foot, you're still going to pin. All right, we're still going to pin. But materials needed to do this, I would say a walking foot and a yard of fabric. A yard of and a whole bunch fabric. of pins and pins and when i'm talking about pins here um you know you know liz and i if you watch our videos we tend to like to use the really fine glass head pins 
When I work with Minky, that's why I have this pin bowl. I have problems, so I have like eight pin bowls with different kinds of pins in them because they can't mix because um, I'm neurotic. And this is my pin bowl for my flower head pins. These are typically a little too thick for me to use for my piecing. I don't love them for that. However, these are my minky pins. Yes. Because I always you can pull see them out them. minky. They're nice and heavy. They're nice and long, nice and strong. I can see the tip so they don't get lost in my minky. Yep. So that's why I love them. The other fun tool we're going to use. Did you know Creative Grizz makes a yardstick? <laughs> This is a two and a half by 36 and a half inch yardstick. And since we're cutting a yard of fabric. Well, because for the most part, when you use a ruler or an acrylic ruler, 24 inches long is sufficient. That'll cut a width of fabric that's folded in half. Um, however, at the shop, especially, we cut, because we cut minkies wide backs and minky all the time. And the 24 is too short. So we were really excited to find these. <laughs> And we use them at the shop all the time, but I'm always uh, surprised at how many of our customers are like, oh, I have a need for that. I'm going to go with 18 and a half inches because then perfect, can not cut again. Right. Okay. So like I said, this is about six, approximately 60 inches wide. Mm -hmm. And we need approximately, approximately 36 by 18. Yes. So if I can do, because I got it folded in half, one cut and cut all three of them out. Right. This is how easy this can be. One cut, you can cut all three because... This is not a quilt. Um, it's not even, I mean, it's apparel, but it's in the category that we don't have to fit it into anything. You know, it's not an inset sleeve or anything like that. So if yours is an inch wider, an inch shorter, life is gonna go on. Actually, the rosette one that I made, the scrap that I had was only 16 and a half inches wide, not the 18 and a half inches oh, wide. It works fine. Works just fine. So if you have a, that's just a little bit too small. Now I'm gonna have to let it go last two inches with a pair of scissors. Is what? Right. That's life. But and this is easy. And now we're gonna make a mess. Okay. If you have a little hand vac, those are awesome to have that's around. That's what we do at when the you, shop. Uh, we have little vacuums and we just suck all this up. If you're doing this at home and you just cut this, our trick is to take this, wad it up in a ball, go throw it in your dryer just on an air fluff. Right, for like Low five time. minutes, and all of the fluff is going to go I, away. I'm just going to sit here and shake for a second, and we're just going to make we're one wrap and roll up. up the other two. Um, and then we'll vacuum the room when we're done. We'll vacuum this room later. But all if you've been to the shop and we've got Minky in front of you, you have seen us pull out our handy dandy hand vacuum. <laughs> okay, so we have one nice long piece like this. Mm -hmm. All we're going to do is we're going to come over here again, where we have a workspace. We're going to fold it in half, hot dog style, you know, in case you ever went to elementary school. And we're just going to pin all down the side. I would put a pin about every two inches if you've got the big long pins. Um, maybe a little closer if you don't have a walking foot. Now, another thing when it comes to sewing with Minky, uh, ideally, you would have like a 9014 needle just because it's a little bit heavier. If you don't change out your needle, you're going to be fine. I sewed these this morning on a 7511. So you're fine if you don't have a longer needle. Now, if you're doing like a minky strip quilt where you're going through a lot of layers, definitely you want the longer needle. Did Georgia try to come in? Oh, my mom. Oh, no, we're fine. Mom's going to put it in the dryer. Um, that's awesome. She's our helper. Um, the other thing with the minky. I brought my awesome. needles. Oh, I was talking about needles. The next thing is lengthen your stitch. Yeah, it doesn't now, have to be a super I short quilting stitch. I am notorious in my quilting classes for telling about everybody to shorten their stitch. Because, most because of a lot of people's stitch is way too long for quilting. In case you're wondering, I like it at a 2 or smaller. I'm more like a 1.8. Right. Uh, I, I just get a lot of 2s, two 2.5s, 3s. It's a little long. Shorten it up a bit. Your pieces will stay together better. Um, but for and this... The stitches won't show once it's been quilted. Move that Sorry. up to a 3... 3.5. Yeah, it can okay. be a longer stitch. A longer stitch, okay? That's going to be a lot easier to work with a minky. So I've already lengthened my stitch on this one. The seam allowance can be really anywhere from right. oh, 3 eighths to half a yard. Half uh, an inch. Half a yard, half an inch. Thank you. I'm going to just correct her because thank you. The yard sounds crazy. That is crazy. And I am going to back stitch. stitch right there because I'm going to tug on it. Now, while she sews this, I'm going to show you a couple different fun kinds of minky we have. 
good. This is their um, chill. This is uh, the fox in so walnut. It's meant to look like a hide. And it's meant to look like a hide. We have had this put on a lot of strip quilts. In fact, I got another big quilt I'm putting it on the back of. But the very first thing I ever sold this for was a lady who would make a scarf. Right. So, so there are some really good animal prints. Ooh, and I'm covered in purple. It's a good look. It's a um, lovely look. This is a new one, which is so pretty, guys. Oh and it's got that it. um, Lux Cuddle Arctic Lynx is what this is called. And it is gorgeous. It's got that subtle animal print, but it's perfect for it's really for winter. soft. And it's got this nice high pile. Now, if you've heard, ever asked me, because I get the question all the time at work, um, do I need batting when I use a minky back? My answer is always yes. And the reason is because the bulk of minky is, is in the pile. It is not in the actual fabric. You can see the actual fabric right here. It has a very loose weave to it. Um, our cotton has a much tighter weave to it, and so the batting is a structural element in your quilt. It's not just puff. Um, so this is a lot of pile, but the fabric on it is not. That's a nice way to explain it. Batting is a structural element. It's a structural element it's in your quilt. It's not just there to make it soft. It's not just it's puffy. A... Now this one is one of their Galaxy Lux Cuddles. So oh, it's just has so much the pile going all different directions. It's kind of a, a blender cuddle. Right. And um, anyway. It's got a lot of dimension to it without being By several colors. You know, this is what I do. People walk along our back minky wall and just go. Our kids pet them. It, it's not just children. It's I know, it's adults. Okay, so I sewed a nice long seam. It's going to be really tricky, guys. I stick my arm in and I turn it right side out. Lovely little periwinkle scarf. Now my seam is on the top here. To make the infinity scarf do its little twisty thing, what I'm going to do is lay this out here and I'm going to flip one end. So now over here the seam is at the bottom and over here the seam is at the top. And then we're going to match these up. Now, in order to make it match, since I'm not going to match seam for seam, what I'm going to do is pinch the seam right here in my right hand and then find the opposite end over here and stick a pin in it to mark that the opposite end. Right. So I, cause I know where the seam is. I can see and feel that. There you go. I need to mark the opposite end. Okay. Right. Now this is the part that can be a little bit tricky. Keeping the twist in here. Yeah. Move the pile. Keeping the twist in here, I need to get this right side to this right side. So what I'm going to do is very gently start turning it, basically making the little snake eat itself here. <laughs> okay? Because I want to keep that twist. And once I get kind of close, I'm going to grab the center of this seam and, that and match it up to this pin and throw pins around, apparently. And I'm going to pin it, okay? And then I'm going to come to the opposite side. And do the same thing. And do the same thing. And then I can kind of shake it and get it all down on a little sock. Nice and loose. And I'm just going to pin these together. <laughs> My plan is to sew pretty much all the way around. But we are going to leave about a two inch gap for turning. So that we can turn it right side out. Because clearly it's the scarf's not out. very pretty like this. And definitely not as cozy. Definitely not as cozy. Now, pin plenty. Don't. There's no such thing as overpinning with Minky. Uh, no, not really. Uh -uh. No such thing. It doesn't you exist. Can't overpin Minky, especially because on these cut ends, it does have a tendency to roll. Yes. So pin lots. It's a good thing. Um. Also, you guys, if you want to be able to refer to this later, it's gonna always be on our Facebook page. And then on our YouTube channel. Yes? Before you start, do the close-ups of the cuddle. The yep. pins are not showing. Okay, I'll show you. Um, anyway, so this is going to always and forever be on there. So you can always refer back to our right. Facebook and our YouTube. And, and I'll get a link in our resources tab up today that includes the free instructions that are from Shannon. Okay, so she has it all pinned. If you have a free arm machine, that's great. If you don't, it's a big enough hole that it's totally uh, Yeah, it's totally a big enough hole. So if you don't have a free arm, no worries. Okay. So I'm just going to tuck it under here, start in one spot, work my way around, 
and they leave, leave that hole. They hold really to turn it right. So she's gonna go ahead and backstitch too, because right. that way when we turn, we don't undo stitches. Right. This is where you know you started out by sewing apparel, not uh, quilts. Yes. Because did you know in quilting we don't backstitch? Yes. No. No, no. backstitching. Um, hey Liz, why don't we backstitch in quilting? Because we add matter, and when we add matter, it distorts. Thank you. I love that. Sorry, we talked about it in terms of physics, but the reason for that is that thread is. When we add thread, we've added substance, substance to it, and that substance doesn't just magically get swallowed into it and disappear. It adds bulk, and we that's why we don't use super heavy threads when we quilt. And so we don't backstitch because if you go back and forth, it's like when you make a mistake and you just stitch over it four times, it doesn't lay flat because you've added all sorts of extra. All right, so that's our reason for not backstitching. Also, it's because we have a really super short stitch, and if you have a super short stitch, it doesn't come in dead Yep, but if you're quilting- Which is another a, reason to shorten your stitch. If you're quilting on a three, your things come undone easily. And right. that's another reason not to quilt on a three. That's why we have a short stitch. So, there's some basic random Liz and Jen quilt rules for you. <laughs> Take them for whatever you think that they're actually worth. Um, <laughs> all right. So we finish it off here, pull it off. You missed a string. Or almost pull it off. Okay, now I've left myself a little hole. Just gonna reach my little fingers in here and grab it and turn it right side out. This would be the kid's favorite part. Right. And voila, we have an infinity scarf. It has a hole in it though. But it has a hole in it. So let's solve that problem. So you know what? I put my needle in here like an <laughs> idiot. So I brought a needle. Oh, here we go. I left gold thread on it. I brought a needle to be able to finish this off. So you just finish this off with a little whip stitch. Uh, that you do it, hand stitching. It if you really, really want to, you can go ahead and use your machine. That's but fine. this is really fast, and honestly, it doesn't matter how good you are at hand work for this because it, it's going to get just it gonna will be lost hide in the, pile. in the minky. You, your stitch will not be seen unless you're using white minky and black like twenty weight thread, and you're really sloppy. That's that's what it would take for this stitch to show so up. So anyway, okay, I just pinned it closed. Because, I just made a little Because knot. Minky likes to roll. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you get those rodges that like to roll. I wanted to make sure that we got enough of the seam allowance down right. in there, if that makes sense. Because otherwise what you're going to end up with is a half inch seam, and then it's going to roll up, and you're going to be doing your whip stitch at like a quarter of an inch, which isn't the end of the world. But Right. I mean, and you can do I like, like a ladder stitch here. that would be totally invisible, which is just fine. She's going to do because a super of quick the, whip stitch. Because of the pile... I'm just gonna do a whip stitch, and that is and that is based on the kind of minky you're using. If you're using a flatter minky, you're gonna want to work a little bit harder. You're gonna work harder to hide the stitch. This is a pretty high pile minky, and so it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the other minkies I wanted to show you is this guy. This is an embossed minky. Um, they're very popular. This is a beautiful paisley design in it, but it is that flatter type of minky, so you would want to be more careful with your stitch. Um, there are a lot of embossed minkies. The most common that you've seen everywhere is the dimple. Right. Um, the one thing you want to know about embossed minky is don't iron it. No, there goes the um, embossing. Because the embossing is on there with heat and heat will take it away. So when you throw these things in the dryer and they're totally dryer friendly, high heat, no, no bueno. Uh, high heat is never good for minky. Just, uh, so we're clear. Sure. Uh, yeah. Air dry, light. Fluff. I mean, I put mine in the dryer, but it's not on hot. No, it's, it's on a low heat setting. Um, right. I mean, because I wash and dry. Because mine get washed and dried all the time because I have small children. Right. So we regularly wash and dry Minky. It does hold up really well. Mm -hmm. The Shannon holds up really well. Um, but don't. No, no high heat. That's yes. not the way to no. go. We don't do high heat. It won't turn out wonderful. No. And guess what? We're just done. done. She's fast though. I am going to jump. I'm going to do that before you lose your needle again. And we this have one start. matches better than the pink. It does match better. The other one is like trying too hard. I know. See, look. Now I have a nice warm snuggle layer. That was funny. 
<laughs> I get to watch my replay on my screen is like two seconds later, so it's funny to see what she just did. Anyway, so guys, Minky scarves. It's an infinity scarf. It's comfy. Um, my nine-year-old <laughs> loves them. Oh my gosh, my nine-year-old and eleven-year-old love them. Um, in fact, we got a couple directly from Shannon at Market a couple years ago, and I brought it home, and uh, my nine-year-old confiscated it, and I haven't seen it since. And she wears it to school all the time. Right. So these make really good gifts. They, um, you know, it's a nice way to give an, a handmade gift without it's not a ton of time and a ton of money. A lot of time. It's still handmade. Jen has her own cute little individual labels. If you saw I, the I got I got some labels made because I'm a dork. Um, but we will have some for sale in the shop already made. Yeah, but like if you are the type that has a little label, seriously, you just sew it right in, and it's definitely a handmade gift. So I sewed mine in when I was doing the nice long seam on the side. I just tucked it in and pinned it, and it got caught in that, and it's and then it's done. And it's clearly handmade. I mean, it doesn't. Okay, by clearly handmade. It's not like, how do I put that? I don't know what you're trying to say. It, it's a handmade gift that is just really nice and doesn't necessarily look like your grandma's crochet tea cozy. I, I love my grandma's crochet. I know, but you know what I mean. But yeah, it, it, this is definitely something that fits a lot of different styles. Yes, that's what I was going and for. And it is fun with this because you can fit a lot of different styles. If you're an animal print gal, there I, you I, go. I gotcha. If you're not an animal print gal and you We've want something some a little cream simpler, embossed paisley. Right. Also, and pretty much everything in between. Yes. So anyway, lots of fun. It's a great gift idea, and they're fun to make. And, and then you get to really vacuum fast. your sewing room, but it's fine. Right. And and lint roll yourself. That's why I put I the sweater on. Actually, I was working this morning in a black t-shirt, and uh, yeah, I was working with Minky, so I'm a mess. And I threw the sweater on on my way out the door because I couldn't find my lint roller. Yeah, there you go. It's awesome. <laughs> Truth. It, it is. This is my life. All right, but thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Um, yeah. So if you and it, if you want to look at too. any of the cuddle fabric that we have on our website, just go to jkquilts.com. Search cuddle. Search cuddle. It'll bring up all of the options. Most of the cuddle fabric we have is sixty inches wide, unless it says extra wide. Now, we do have some luxes that are 80 inches wide, and guess what you can get out of a yard of that? Four scarves. Yes. So you, if one of those is what you really love, great. Now you can make four out of a yard. Yes. Because, yeah. Anyways. Okay, thanks. Have we'll a good day, everybody. We'll all... see you next week when we remember what we're doing. <gasps> oh, uh, the words. It's coming. Ducks. Quack. Are they going to hear it? I don't know. We're going to see. If the fabric's here in time, we have a plan for you. Right. If not, we will make up. We'll make plan. it up as we go. So All have right. a good one. We'll see Bye. you guys.